Hi, this is Brian. Today I'd like to do a video on why positive ground was used on old cars, trucks, and tractors. And I'd like to speculate on why negative ground is used today. I'm in my basement workshop today because it's kind of cold out in the garage and I don't have the furnace on. In today's video, I'm going to get to the answer right away because it's going to go 15 minutes long. For those of you who want an immediate answer, we'll get to it. If you like my answer, press the thumbs up, leave me a like, and you can move on. For those of you that want to stick with me, we'll then go into a deeper dive, clarify the answer a little bit more. I'm going to offer some hints and answer some questions at the end of the video. So please, stand by. Here's the immediate answer. We know that electricity flows from negative to positive. Remember that. That's going to be very important throughout this answer in this video. Electricity flows from negative to positive. We know that the ground tang of the spark plug is physically bonded with the ground plane of the engine. We know that the spark must jump from the center electrode to the ground tang. Thus, the center electrode is negative and the ground tang is positive. This is how every ignition coil in every engine is wound. So if it works that way, why not make the whole tractor positive ground? End of story. Now let's go into a deep dive. Okay, let's go into the deep dive now. By the way, I have knowledge, but I don't have neat graphics, nor do I have music. So you just have to look at a still picture. No, not of my face, I'll spare you from that. You have to look at a still picture and listen to me. Close your eyes, rest up, listen up. Look at the stuff I think is cool on my router bit cabinet. And also, I'm reading a document. I wrote this document, but never published it. It's just a private document on my PC. I've never published it in any way. I'm just going to read you my document. There are a lot of reasons stated for positive ground. The reasons range from, well, because, to it reduced corrosion. Whereas those reasons may be partially correct, very interesting, I feel the most correct and primary reason is pure physics. The truth of the matter is that every spark plug based engine in the world today has an ignition system running on positive ground. We just went through that in the brief answer. This is true for cars, trucks, no blowers, like the small spark plug that you saw, airplanes, old tractors, which this video is about, boat motors, Whatever else you can think of that has a spark plug. And yes, you heard me right. Everything with the spark plug in it has an ignition coil wound for positive ground. The dogs upstairs are having a heyday. It's a complicated story to tell, so let's start at the beginning. Follow me all the way to the end before you go to the comment section and leave an embarrassing comment. You know, if it's a comment that's not nice, I'm going to delete it. So when documented scientific experimentation with electricity first started, you know, think Benjamin Franklin, 1750. It was thought that the magic force, as they called it, the magic force was from positive to negative. And let's just call this magic force, which is actually the flow of electrons, electricity from here on. The early scientists and physicists had good reason to believe this, meaning the flow of electricity was from positive to negative. A popular electroplating experiment of the day clearly showed the sacrificial metal on the positive terminal eroding and being redeposited on the collector, which was on the negative terminal which is called the cathode. To them, that was proof positive that the electricity was flowing from positive to negative and taking the metal with it. 
I mean, after all, you could see it with your own eyes. They saw it with their own eyes. How much more proof do you really need? You know, I plate nickel right here in my workshop, right at this very chair that I'm sitting at right now. And the nickel is hooked up to the positive wire. And you can positively see the nickel eroding and going on to the metal, which is on the negative terminal. Hence, positive. Electricity flows from positive to negative. That's what they thought. However, we know today that the true flow of electricity is from negative to positive. And I hope I don't get that wrong in this video. I might make a mistake. If I do, forgive me. The true flow of electricity is from negative to positive. But in the case of the experiment, what was observed is simply the direction of the electrochemical reaction, not the direction of the flow of electricity. But that's some pretty deep chemistry, and they didn't know that in the day. Nonetheless, two important details of the story are now known. First, electricity actually flows from the negative terminal of a battery to the positive terminal. Remember this, that's very important. Second, everybody who has ever been taught electricity has been taught so by following circuits from positive to negative. I have two college degrees in this kind of stuff, and this is how I was taught. Hey, thank you, Wes, and others who taught me. A deep knowledge of electricity has been very helpful to me in my life. So thus, we all want to see circuits in this way, positive to negative, because that's how we were all trained. We can thank people like Mr. Franklin for this. Furthermore, mechanics who are ill-trained on electricity have difficulty thinking positive ground, although it makes absolutely no difference when actually thinking through a problem. Serviceability may be the true reason why we have negative ground systems today. That's my speculation. It simply makes it easier for most mechanics to fix your car. And that's good enough reason for me. In fact, if you look at today's cars and you look how complex the electrical systems have become, how complex the wiring diagrams have become, anything that makes it easier for the mechanics is good. But early engine designers noticed one thing by trial and error. When the ignition coil was hooked up wrong, the engine would start hard, use more fuel, produce less power, and wear out the spark plugs more rapidly. If you don't believe this, go and reverse the coil in your beloved tractor and you will find out. The reason for this is spark plug design. The spark must jump from the center electrode to the ground tang. I kind of showed you that in the brief answer at the beginning of the video. That is how the spark plug is designed to operate. When the spark jumps in this way, the engine works correctly and the spark plugs last a long time. In the case of modern spark plugs with advanced metal electro design, plugs may go over 100,000 miles. So we now know the story. It's all physics. We know that electricity flows from negative to positive. We know that the ground tang of the spark plug is physically bonded with the ground plane of the engine. We know that the spark must jump from the center electrode to the ground tang. Thus, the center electrode is negative and the ground tang is positive. This is how every ignition coil and every engine is wound. Be it today in Wes's beautiful 2021 Dodge Ram with Hemi, or your 1939 Farmall H tractor. So if you know that the ignition system is actually operating with a positive ground, and it's 1939, why wouldn't you just make the whole engine and the whole tractor, the whole vehicle assembly positive ground? I mean, that's what I would have done, and quite frankly, that's what I would probably even do today. So in conclusion, it may sound impossible to you that the ignition system on your car is positive ground and the battery is hooked up with the negative ground. It may sound like there are two electrical systems on your car. That's not the case at all. If you think like an electron and from a physics point of view, electrons don't care much if they flow out of a copper wire or flow through the steel frame. The electrons don't care that a wire has a red 
colored rubber coating on it as opposed to a wire that has black rubber on it. The truth is, on your vehicle, every bit of electricity is flowing out of the negative terminal and into the framework of your car. And so what? It just doesn't matter. If there was some sort of extremely advanced microscope that could look into a wire and actually see the flow of electrons, this is exactly what you would see. If you looked at the spark plug with this microscope, you would see the electrons jumping off the center electrode to ground, thus proving positive ground ignition. Indeed, that is how the ignition coil is wound. In the end, we use negative ground today in vehicles as well as red and black cables simply because it makes electrical service easier and that in turn makes us feel better. And finally let's get to some questions and answers and helpful hints. And you know what I'll change up the scenery a little bit on you. I'll show you my Farmall H LED lamp that I've made. It's 12 volt DC although it plugs into 110 it has a power supply in it. So don't worry that it's not safe. And of course, off works. Of course it works on dim. And of course it works on bright. And speaking of, co of course, when I want to do a video, the dogs all come over to visit and they're upstairs running around. You probably hear them. Well, my wife and her friend too. So. So finally, let me offer some, let me answer some questions for you. I have a six volt positive ground tractor. Should I convert it to 12 volt and go to an alternator? Well, I don't care. It's your decision all the way. Do what you desire, but most importantly, do what you know how to do. On tractors that I work on, like George's 1944H that you've seen in other videos of mine, it remains 6 volt with positive ground. That's how it came from the factory. That's how it's going to stay. The generator works like a dream. And that's because I know how to make them do that. You may or may not. And when the generator works good, the battery stays fully charged. This tractor will start any day of the year. And this is Minnesota, by the way. But again, do what you know how to do. But here's some helpful hints. If you have an old farm hall, do these three things. Take the generator off. Clean every metal point of contact and reassemble the thing. This is true, especially if you've painted everything. Painting everything is nice, but it's a problem. It destroys the grounds. Remember, at the factory, everything was assembled, then painting, assuring that they had a good ground path. So good ground is essential. If you have an old farm all, like pre-World War II, not like the box that's shown on my lamp that has off, dim, bright, but the kind that has low, high charge. For those ones, the field is grounded through the cover of the electrical switch box. And of course, current through the field is what makes the generator generate electricity. The field is grounded through the cover of the electrical switch box. Yeah, that was kind of a bad idea. That wasn't a good design from the international harvester engineers. That ground is tricky and really hard to keep good. That cover is not a tight fitting thing by any means, especially when it's been slobbered with paint. A better idea is to hook up a ground wire from the aluminum switch housing to the steering wheel post, thus eliminating the ground through the cover. Do this. I've done this and it works very well. Then the field works really good. The generator works good. And finally, use six volt cables. Can't stress that enough. And that's true for any tractor. Yeah, they're harder to find and they cost more money when you find them. That's the way it is. Next question, does it matter how the ignition coil is hooked up? Absolutely. Positively. On a positive ground system, the positive terminal of the coil must be hooked up to the distributor. This is so important. Remember, the distributor is simply a switched path to ground. 
Think of the distributor as ground. And on a positive ground system, the positive terminal of the coil has to be grounded. Hey, help! helpful hint here. If your old John Deere is having problems and backfiring, check the ground between the aluminum case of the distributor and the cast iron of the motor. You know, those distributors get a coating on them. It's aluminum oxide and it doesn't conduct electricity very well. Although the distributor distributor is firmly seated in the cast iron block, it doesn't have a good ground. Take the clamp out, take the distributor out, clean it all up, put it all back together, and that'll cause that problem. And I shouldn't pick on John Deere's here. This is true for any tractor. Last question, how do I jumpstart a tractor with positive ground, especially if I'm using something that has negative ground? Hey, positive to positive, negative to negative, it's as simple as that. Just exactly how you'd jumpstart anything else. Remember, electrons don't care about the color of the wire in your world. In fact, if it turns you on, you could use pink jumper cables with purple polka dots. Electrons do not care. Oh sure, if you're jump-starting something like this, make sure that you don't touch both frames with the conductor or there's going to be a big spark. Ha uh ha. -huh. Well, this is Brian. I hope you found this video useful and helpful. If you did, and if you stuck it out this long, please press the thumbs up and like this video. Once again, I thank you and have fun working on your old tractor. Bye now, and happy holidays.